Gopal Kumar continued, In my heart I thought, what happiness do they experience there? How many are like them? What form of the Lord do they worship? Wishing to see them, and my heart fixed on them, I chanted, became very powerful, and quickly went to their world. There I saw glorious Sanaka, Sanandana, Sanat Kumar, and the fourth, Sanatana. They were being worshipped by other sages like themselves. They were happily conversing, but those like myself could not understand their words. Sanatana Goswami explains that a sample of their conversation is found in the prayers by the personified Vedas of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Although they were not like the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself, still, Simply by seeing them, I felt great happiness. Sanatan Goswami explains that they did not have four-armed forms or supreme power and opulence as the Lord does. To see the Lord of the universes as I had before, I wandered amongst the sages fixed in meditation. Sanatan Goswami explains that, expecting to find the Supreme Lord, as he had found him in Svargaloka and Maharloka, Gopal Kumar visited many places in Tapaloka. He did not find the Lord, however, but instead only found sages living alone, hardly talking to each other, and wrapped in meditation. Not seeing the Lord anywhere, I asked the sages about him. As I bowed before them and recited prayers, they did not even see me almost always situated in ecstatic trance, finding pleasure in the Supreme, all their desires fulfilled, and served by mystic perfections, all were perfect celibate sages. My great desire to see the Lord did not bear fruit. Indeed, it seemed to be checked by associating with those sages. Because of seeing their great power, I stayed among them, and because of respect for my guru's words, and also because I had seen the results it brings, I did not abandon my chanting. Because this place is naturally very pleasing to the heart, my chanting increased, and with that, my desire to see the Lord also increased. Seeing that I desired to go to Nilachala to see Lord Jagannath, Pipalayana Muni said to me, why do you wish to leave this great place and go to another? Why would you go to see the Supreme Lord with your eyes? Sanatana Goswami explains that here, the sage implies that the Supreme Lord is beyond the perception of the eyes and other senses. Pipalayana Muni continued, Fix your mind in meditation, and you will always see him everywhere, within and without, as if he were always before you. In this way, and not in another way, the Supreme Self, Lord Vasudev, whose form is eternal and full of knowledge and bliss, will always appear in your purified heart. Sanatana Goswami explains that this way to see the Lord is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam 4 3 23. Pipalayana Muni here implies that because the Supreme Lord is all-pervading and is manifest only by his own wish, he cannot be seen with the eyes or other senses. Because one cannot actually see without the action of the mind, the action of seeing the Lord with one's eyes is only perfectly done when the mind is also fixed on him. The happiness of all the senses rests in the happiness of the mind, and the actions of the words, eyes, ears, and other senses also rest in the actions of the mind. Without the actions of the mind, the actions of all the senses are fruitless. When the mind does not act, one cannot experience anything. If sometimes 
out of love for his devotee, the Lord appears and is seen with one's eyes. He is actually seen with the eye of transcendental knowledge, although one may think that he is seen with the physical eye. Or if, by the power of his mercy, he is seen by the external eyes, the bliss of seeing him is felt in the mind. After he is no longer visible to the eyes, he still enjoys pastimes in the mind. The mind is the place where the happiness of seeing him is felt. By his mercy, the happiness in the mind expands. The happiness in the senses has no power to expand in that way. When one sees the Lord in meditation, it is as if one sees him directly. The demigod Brahma gives evidence for the special mercy of the Lord. Sanatana Goswami explains that, seen in meditation, the Lord grants benedictions, talks with the devotee, touches him, and relates to him in many ways. Lord Brahma's vision of the Lord is described in several places of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It is said that the direct sight of the Lord delights the devotees, but fills Kangsa, Duryodhana, and those like them with fear and a host of faults. Even though they directly saw Lord Narayan's handsome, glorious, blissful form, which with its virtues delights all the senses, Madhu, Kaitaba, and a host of other sinful demons would not abandon their wickedness, which tormented everyone. To show the glories of devotional service, the blissful Lord delights his devotees and hides that delight from others. Sanantan Goswami explains that as a fire's heat is concealed by smoke, so the Lord conceals from demons the bliss of seeing him. This verse is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam 7 1 18. Pipalayana Muni continued Of the nine ways of devotional service, remembering the Lord is the best, for it engages the mind which is the best of the senses. The mind is able, without stopping, as much as it wishes, to give the Lord pure love, the most confidential of spiritual gifts. Pure love, which is the goal to be attained by other spiritual practices, which is the best of all goals of life, which is the only powerful way to bring the Supreme Lord under one's dominion, which is only attained by the Lord's mercy, which is the only treasure of the devotees, which is flooded with the sweetness of wonderful transcendental bliss, which is glorious beyond description, and which manifests the transformations of ecstasy arises from the actions of the mind. If you think meditation is difficult for the mind, or if you wish to see the Lord and thus make your eyes fruitful, then go to Bardvarsha on the Ganda Madana mountain. See Lord Narayan, the friend of Nara. Fixed in meditation, we see him within and without. Therefore, we never suffer separation from him. That is why the Lord has gone there. A very austere brahmachari archery teacher with matted locks of hair, he stays there to benefit the world with his teachings. Sanantan Goswami explains that the word hitta means that his teachings brought auspiciousness to the people. Seeing that I wished to go there, the four sages, headed by Sanaka, said to me, Go there. They showed me many forms of the Lord. The first one became Lord Narayan. Another became the form of Lord Vishnu. Another became the Lord of Sacrifices. Another assumed many different forms. Sanantan Goswami explains that the first one was perhaps Sanaka, or perhaps another of the Kumaras. The form of Lord Vishnu here was either Lord Upendra, whom Gopu Kumar had seen in Svargaloka, or perhaps it was a form like his. The Lord of Sacrifices is the deity worshipped on Maharloka. The forms of Lord Nishringa and Lord Vamana were among the many different forms. 
Trembling with fear and bowing down with folded hands, I said to them, O lords who love the poor, please forgive my horrible offenses. They touched me on the head, and I entered a trance of meditation, and saw those forms again as before. Sometimes, by the power of meditation, I still see those forms as if they were right before my eyes. As I chanted my mantra, I found happiness and faith. Then the sweetness of Brajabhumi agitated my mind. Sanatana Goswami explains that by chanting, he remembered Brajabhumi and then became agitated with the sufferings of separation from it. Sometimes I experience a certain state like deep sleep where I see many forms of the Lord. That state hinders my chanting. Sanatana Goswami explains that the state described here is ecstatic trance, samadhi, where the mind and all the senses become inactive. For this I lamented. I wished to go to Nilachala. Consoling me, the sages asked what had happened. Hearing my lament, they praised me. I could not understand and became unhappy. Then, by the power of my regular practice, I saw, as if before my eyes, the Lord of the universes in many forms everywhere, within and without. Sometimes seeing Sanaka and the other sages so wrapped in meditation that they manifested forms of the Lord, I became very happy. Even when there was no such displays, I did not lament with a desire to see them. In this way, I happily lived there for many days.